morning I'm at Drumbeg and I'm standing on the road outside the parish church of St Patrick and this, this church and the Litchgate in front of it is extremely well known uh, landmark the Litchgate and the church it's very scenic very picturesque it's the type of place that any a girl would like to have her wedding very scenic um, and there's been a, a church presence on this uh, spot Let's just walk up this way actually there's an archway of uh, trees here this is very scenic picturesque um, This church, there's been a church presence on, on this uh, spot since uh, we, we believe uh, the 13th century. Um, but this present building dates from 1870. Um, the tower actually is a wee bit older. It dates from uh, 1831 apparently. A beautiful, beautiful church. This is the, uh, the yew tree arch. Now wouldn't any bride today love to be progressing up through these series of arches? And these arches also, like many other things in the churchyard, uh, these, these yews date from way back when. And there's a wee inscription here if I can get down to, to video it. These ewes were presented by Thomas Montgomery Esquire of Ballydrain in the year 1885. That's good. Oh boy, so it's difficult getting up. So I'll just progress down through them. And these these uh, these, these yew tree arches have have seen many significant people. And yes, sir, mortals like myself come and go. And they're still here, folks. Fabulous. I'll get a, a wee shot of them from the other side. Oh. And look back. History on your doorstep. Not marvellous. During the Second World War this church uh, was widely used by American servicemen and uh, often was packed with them. So uh, well, that's quite interesting and they had their uh, flags and banners and all the rest of it in the church. Um, Inside the church, no, I'm not, I haven't even tried the door yet. Um, sometimes uh, Church of Ireland churches are open, like Catholic churches. Um, inside the church, uh, I believe, there's a whole series of uh, plaques, but um, there's, a, there's a particular stone in uh, the porch, which uh, is inscribed free house 1675 and this uh, stone um, came from a house built for travellers at Ballydrain and it was uh, uh, that house was it was owned by a, a certain John Stewart and uh, it was inscribed to commemorate his meeting with Anne Wilson of Crogline Dunfries and uh, the stone as it was transferred here. And here is the free house stone that was left to the church. And here's all the, the information about it. And it's a romantic story about how... Who, who was it? Uh, 
Matt Miss Wilson. Miss from Wilson from Krog in in in, in in Dumfries. Um, met with her future husband. And here it's all here. My goodness gracious. And there's there's a massive big commemoration there as well. Brilliant. This is the original old church. See this sandstone wall here? It was the old church. And the spire of course was included in that. So really you've got the old and you can see that for yourself there. You've got the old married to the new. So this part of the church dates or predates this part of the church. And I got a wee bit confused. And you see, you see the way that, that um, a section of the church roof comes out. There was another section uh, that would make it symmetrical. And it comes out on the other side. But it, that's all done away with now. Because this new section was put in place. I think it was 1870. And this bit of the church I think was from... 1733 and the tower was blown down and the Charlie family uh, rebuilt it in, and it was all up and going again in 1831 and this here is the uh, Charlie family uh, set of graves a whole stack of people buried in here and it was then that um, they, they contributed hugely to the finances of this church and I think they were responsible for uh, restoring the uh, the church spire and, and building the rectory and, and all sorts of other bits and pieces. Some, some uh, very uh, generous and very wealthy uh, people in round John Begg. Some uh, interesting gravestones. Ah, here's the body of Anne Wilson, daughter to John Wilson Laird of Crock Lane. I thought this was going to be in the in the church porch, but it's actually not. It's outside. Um, he departed this life December 16, 89, age 63. Body of John Stewart, above mentioned, who died. 16, mm, 21 in his 70th year and also the body of Thomas Stewart, their son, who deceased in July 1715. I think that's maybe 1691, I'm not too sure. Looks like a, a two. And who's this? Ah, here lies the body of Anne Wilson, daughter of the Lord of Cronline, wife to John Stewart of Bolly Drain who departed this life December 1682. So there's a lot of history here. And there's a a crest. And there's another crest up here. Just walking around the back of the church. I'm gonna walk around the graveyard too because I think there's some uh, quite interesting graves. Nice uh, autumnal. 
colours in the trees there. It's fairly uh, pretty. There's a, a notice board actually down there, so I'll go down and have a wee look. Holster Scott's Early Churches. There's been a church here since medieval times. But a Protestant place of worship was established on this site in 1622. An early Scottish connection is that uh, when in 1614, Sir Robert McClellan of Cumbrite, of Cumbrite married Elizabeth Montgomery, elder, eldest daughter of Sir Hugh Montgomery of Great Ards. The diary included four great town lands near Lisnagarvey. One was at Bally Drumbeg, now Drumbeg. Among the first Scottish families in the Lagan were the Stuarts of Ballydrain, who are said to have settled here in 1608. Three intriguing tombstones are set into the church walls, that's the ones I was looking at. Memorials to a Captain William Stuart, whose inscription tells us that he was cut to pieces in 1641. His son James Stuart, John Stuart of Ballydrain, and John's wife Anna Wilson, the daughter of the Lord of Cron Line near Dumfries in Galilee. <laughs> Galloway. They set up a free house for travellers in 1675, the date stone of which is in the church porch. Another prominent Scot in this area was James Maxwell, who died 1681. His son Arthur Maxwell, a leading Presbyterian, was appointed as a trustee to distribute funds to the poor in Lisburn after the town fire in 1707. Buried here are many prominent Ulster Scots families such as the Mekansas of Suffolk, Ulster Scots of Suffolk, and the Montgomery family of Ballydrain House, now Malone Golf Club. There you are, Malone Golf Club. 1657 uh, gravestone of Lieutenant James Haddock, whose roots may, may have been in Glasgow area, has some mysterious traditions associated with, with it. Find out more on the audio app. Memorial that provides a link with the tumultuous 1790s is a small plain cross that commemorates a centenarian, centenarian William Goldie, whom we know was an Irish volunteer of 98. He died in 1873 at the ripe old age of 104. So, what's this here? From Belfast to Lisnagarvey is about seven miles and is a paradise in comparison to any part of Scotland. That was a quote from Sir William Brereton. I'm just looking at that building. I, I don't recognise that building. Yes. I don't know. But that's the gravestone I videoed there a minute ago. Illustrations left to right. McClellan, oh, that's the McClellan Castle in Cumbright. Scotland built in 1570s. Detail of one of the 17th century Stuart gravestones which are set into the church wall. That's that there. Coat of arms detail from the Montgomery's of Ballydrain. So that's the, the coat of arms I was looking at of the Montgomery's and the ornate gravestone of Florence Jane Montgomery of Ballydrain. And then William Goldie gravestone. Brilliant! I love it whenever I find uh, notice boards. So I'll have a wee look around the graveyard now. 